401k is one of the best places to invest because you can stuff hundreds of thousands of dollars into it over your lifetime. But it can easily turn into one of your worst nightmares if you make a few expensive mistakes that I'm going to show you in this video. Avoiding a couple of them could save you around half a million dollars combined. If you don't want to potentially lose all of your money, then avoid rolling over a 401k into an IRA when you leave a job without understanding what you lose by doing that. An employer-based retirement plan like a 401k is federally protected in case you owe creditors money. They cannot tap into anything within this account. IRAs, on the other hand, are not federally protected from lawsuits. Now, whether or not you have credit protection depends on how your state handles it, and they are all different. This isn't a reason to avoid rolling over a 401k into an IRA or avoid an IRA to begin with. Heck, I love my Roth IRAs, and I'm not too worried about it but it is one of those things just to be aware of so nothing catches you by surprise in the future. Oh, and if you owe the IRS money, <laughs> nothing is safe. They can literally raid your 401k and any other account you have. Quick heads up that unless I say otherwise, all of these mistakes apply both to traditional and Roth 401ks. I'm going to use 401k throughout the whole video as a blanket statement to cover both of them, just to kind of save my jaw some work. You also need to consider all of your options for what to do with an old 401k once you leave that employer. There are four things that you can do. Number one, roll it into an IRA, kind of like we just talked about. Number two, leave it where it is and don't move it. Number three, you can roll it into your new employer's 401k. And number four, you could cash it out. I'll tell you a horror story about this later in the video, but I am never a fan of cashing out any 401k money when you leave a job before retirement. But before I tell you about that, here are a few things to consider when deciding whether or not to roll your old 401k into a new 401k or IRA. First, compare the quality of your investment options between the two. By quality, I mean the low cost index funds or low cost target date funds. If your new plan has better low cost options, consider rolling your old 401k into the new one. If your old 401k has better low cost options compared to your new plan, then it might make sense to leave it where it is. Just make sure you don't forget that the old account even exists like you do a $20 bill in a jacket pocket. You'd be surprised how easy it is to lose track of an old 401k during your very long working career. Second, you wanna compare the plan costs of both 401ks. This is what they charge you to service the account. Sometimes the cost doesn't change when you're no longer employed there, and sometimes it increases. So make sure to take that into account. If you're curious about whether a 401k fee is considered high, then leave a comment down below with how much you pay. I have some very intelligent regular viewers who will hopefully give you some feedback. A few of them get pretty wild down there, so try to ignore some of the strange things that they say. I promise they mean well, but they're a little cuckoo. If your old and new 401ks are both littered with trash high fee funds, then an IRA might be an ideal place to move that old 401k since you have a lot more control over which low cost funds you invest in. I need to call out one big red flag with this one. If you roll an old traditional 401k into a traditional IRA and do a backdoor Roth every year or you plan to in the future, Future, then you need to look into and understand something called the pro rata rule. Since I personally do backdoor Roths every year, I try to keep my traditional IRA empty, which is why I have always either rolled my old traditional 401ks into new traditional 401ks, or I've left them where they're at. Don't quote me on this, but I think you might be able to roll a traditional IRA back into a traditional 401k if your current 401k provider allows it. Now, this might be a way for you to get a $0 balance in that traditional IRA so that you don't have to worry about the pro rata rule when doing a backdoor Roth. Once again, I don't know if this is possible, just make sure you look into it. If you're rolling an old Roth 401k into a Roth IRA, then you don't have to worry about any of this. Always, always, always try to invest up to your employer's full match no matter what. I had a college buddy who didn't do this for two years into his first job. Now we were laughing about it the other day and it still bothers him. If this match would have been say $4,000 over those two years, then it would be worth about $19,000 today. To make it worse, that $19,000 invested over the next 30 years 
could turn into around $146,000. Everyone send their condolences to my buddy Tim <laughs> down in the comments below, please. The amount they're offering as a match is a part of your compensation package, just like vacation days and a salary. If you make, say, $100,000 and they offer a 3% dollar for dollar match and you don't contribute $3,000 to get the $3,000 match, it's like telling your employer that they can deduct $3,000 off of your yearly salary for no reason. But once you contribute up to your employer's full match in a 401k, you need to stop to avoid the mistake of contributing more to that account. This is because if you have more money to invest, you need to follow the investing order of operations to determine where your next dollar should go. Based on that, your next dollar should go to one of three accounts until they're maxed out depending on your situation. The first potential account would be an HSA. This is mainly due to the triple tax savings it offers compared to a traditional or Roth 401k. If you don't have an HSA or prefer something like an IRA instead, your next dollar should go to a traditional or Roth IRA based on what works best for you until those accounts are fully maxed out. There are a few reasons that you would want to max out either your Roth or traditional IRA before contributing more money to that 401k. First, you have a lot more fund options to invest in compared to the limited number of funds offered in a 401k. Second, since you have more funds available to invest in, you can shop around for lower cost options. Third, you aren't charged service fees to have an IRA like you are with a 401k. Fourth, you get to choose the investment platform. So if you prefer Fidelity, Vanguard, or M1 Finance, you can choose the one that you like. Once your HSA and or IRA bucket is maxed out for the year, if you still have money left to invest, then you can go back to contributing to your 401k for the rest of the year until that account is maxed. Out. Speaking of getting better low cost funds within an IRA, you need to watch out for high fee actively managed funds that are in a lot of these 401ks. There are two main reasons that you want to completely avoid any fund that is actively managed. First, most are known for underperforming a basic low cost index fund over the short term and even more so over the long term. Here's the most recent report showing what percentage of actively managed funds underperform. This is a huge reason why you should only invest in index funds within your 401k. As you can see, the vast majority of these financial professionals aren't good at their job. Now, if we were this bad at our jobs for this long, then we would be fired extremely fast, which might make you wonder, why they even exist if they're well known for being so terrible? The simple answer is the money. Always follow the money to find the truth. These funds charge an ungodly amount of money and fees when they're offered inside 401k plans. And who pays those fees? us. This brings us to the second reason to avoid high fee actively managed funds within your 401k. They are insanely expensive and can cost you tens of thousands or even hundreds of thousands of dollars. A decent rule of thumb is any fund with an expense of 0.10% or lower is good. The lower, the better. Here's a quick cheat sheet to give you an idea of how much it will cost based on different fund expenses. So for a fund with a high fee of 0.50% over 30 years, that's going to reduce your future 401k balance by 14%. I know a fee of 0.50% doesn't seem like a lot, but you need to change your mindset and understand 0.50% is an extremely high fee. Think of it like this. If your 401k was worth $1 million in 30 years, then after accounting for the 0.50% fund fee, you'd be paying $140,000, which would only leave you with $860,000 in your account. If you had invested in a low cost index fund that charged a very small 0.03% during that time, your $1 million balance would have dropped to only $991,000 because you only had to pay $9,000 in fees as opposed to $140,000. Avoiding this one mistake could save this person $131,000. And even if you don't have a million dollar 401k, avoiding this mistake could still save you tens of thousands of dollars. All actively managed funds have high fees, but I've also noticed that there's some index funds and target date funds within 401ks that charge incredibly high fees. This is a big, big problem that you potentially have the ability to fix. 
I'm going to assume that the people in charge of choosing your investment options within the company genuinely don't understand how much these high fees are actually costing you and all of your coworkers. I cannot stress this enough. It's literally destroying the financial future of everyone around you. The good news is that if you notice that your 401k plan has very few low cost options, then this is how you'd make a change. There's an amazing resource on the Bogleheads website that walks you through how to campaign for a better 401k plan. They even give you an email template to copy and paste into an email to send to your benefits department to request more low cost options within your 401k. To be honest, if you could get your employer to add a few more low cost index fund options, then you'd be saving current and future employees, no joke, many millions of dollars in fees combined. Let that sink in for a second. By copying, pasting, and sending one email to your benefits department, you could change the financial future of hundreds, if not thousands of people. Another mistake I see is not getting yourself on a consistent schedule of increasing your 401k contribution rates. Increasing your contribution by just a few percentages every single year could be the difference between you retiring with enough to live on and you having to scrape by financially when you're too old to work any longer. Now just saying, hey bro, increase how much you're contributing is one thing, but visually seeing the power of this decision is a game changer. I put together a simple contribution calculator to illustrate this point. It's based on the average household income in the US over 20, 30, and 40 year time periods. Ideally, your income will increase over time, so this is a static estimate. However, it's still a good way to show how much your ending 401k balance will be if you increase your contribution by different percentages. It can be difficult to understand that big ending balance, so I included a column showing how much you could comfortably live on every year based on a 4% withdrawal rate. If you can go from a 9% to an 11% contribution rate, you'll be able to increase your yearly spending by around $5,000. To put it another way, increasing your contribution rate by 2% would increase your yearly retirement spending by about 18%. That's a pretty solid return on investment. I have two recommendations when it comes to increasing your contribution amount. First, most accounts should allow you to turn on auto escalation, which is helpful from a behavioral perspective. This way, you don't have to worry about manually increasing it yourself. Second, you can get yourself on a schedule of manually increasing it regularly. Going from a 5% contribution immediately to a, say, 10 or 15% contribution rate can be extremely disruptive to your personal finances, which we want to try to avoid. So what you can do is slowly increase it by 1% at a time. After getting acclimated to that 1% increase for 3 or 4 months, then increase it by another 1%. Rinse and repeat that process until you get to your ideal contribution rate. Here's a bonus strategy that I always liked. Every time that I got a raise, I would increase my contribution by that full amount or a portion of it. So if I got something like a $5,000 pay bump, I would figure out that percentage and increase my contributions by that exact amount. Instead of giving my yearly spending a raise when I got paid, I gave my net worth a raise instead. Now after doing this a few times, I eventually got to the point where I was able to max out my 401k with no issues. Now if you're not that hardcore, then you can take a hybrid approach to this. You can raise your spending and net worth by taking that $5,000, increasing your contributions by 75 5% of that amount and increasing your lifestyle, aka your spending, by 25% of that. If you want to input your personal salary to see what would happen, you can get a free copy of that contribution calculator down in the description below. Okay, I've put this one off for long enough because, well, it involves a boneheaded mistake that cost me a ton of money when I was younger. And that is not understanding what it means to be vested within a 401k and the different types of vesting schedules. I'll tell you how much this one cost me in just a minute. Being vested in a 401k means you've earned the right to keep all of the contributions made by your employer to your 401k even if you leave the company. There are three main types of vesting schedules most of you will see. First is when the funds are immediately yours. According to a PSCA survey, about 44% of employers offer this type of vesting schedule. The other 56% of employers fall under these next two. Second is a graded vesting schedule, which means that different portions of your employer match will unlock over certain periods of time. For example, an employee may become vested in 20% of the match after two years. 60% after four years, and 100% after five years. Third is a cliff vesting schedule. It's where the employee owns 100% of the contributions after a specific date. 
It could be one year, two years, three years, but not more than six. Rules from the IRS say that an employer has to allow you to be fully vested within six years. If you leave the company before that time frame, you're not fully vested, so you get zero dollars of the money they've contributed. This is an expensive mistake that I made early on in my career. At the time, the word vested had never entered into these little ear holes, so I had zero clue what it was. I had $5,000 in my 401k from my employer match, and I left the company after being there for one year and 10 months. Now, when I started that new job, I noticed that something seemed wrong with my old 401k. It should have been worth a lot more. I wasn't sure how much, but I definitely knew that it should have been more. So I called the provider to see where some of that money went. That's when I found out what it meant to be vested. I had to be there for two years to get 100% of the employer match, which meant that I was two months shy of that. So after I hung up that phone, sure enough, took this thing and I chucked it through the wall. I was so angry. Let's do the math together so we can all collectively laugh at how much this one mistake cost me. That $5,000 invested would be worth about $28,000 today. Because I am a glutton for punishment, let's take it one step further. 30 years from now, that $28,000 could potentially turn into over $200,000. I am never gonna financially recover from this. <sighs> Breathe, I still get mad about that. After making this mistake, I realized that if you happen to move to a new employer before you are fully vested, you should try to negotiate this money as a sign-on bonus since you'll be losing out on it. After the fact, my manager at the new job told me that if they had known this beforehand, they would have definitely added that to my sign-on bonus. Yeah, as my grandpa used to say to me, Sorry, Jared, sucks to suck. But before you accept an offer for that job with the new employer, you need to ask about the details of their 401k plan. There are two main things that you need to find out. First, ask how long it will take for you to be able to start participating in the 401k. It'll be different depending on the employer. Sometimes it's immediately, sometimes it's at the three, six, or 12 month mark, or somewhere in between. According to the IRS, technically, they don't have to let you contribute until you have at least one year of service. If the new employer doesn't allow you to contribute immediately, then see if you can negotiate that into your contract. If they still can't do that, try to negotiate a slightly higher salary or sign-on bonus. You can explain it using the angle of how important saving for retirement is to you. If you're not able to do it for X number of months, then that's going to put you in a bad spot. The second thing you need to figure out before accepting a new position is how long it will take for them to start matching your 401k contribution. As with the one that I just mentioned, sometimes it's right away and other times there might be a little bit of a grace period. Again, if there's a grace period, see if you can negotiate for it to kick in sooner if possible. Everything is worth trying to negotiate. I know that it might be a little uncomfortable for some people at times, but if you're not advocating for yourself, then no one else will. Plus, what's the worst they're going to say? The same thing my girlfriend tells me every single night. No. Now listen, I understand that random things happen that cause us to need some quick cash to solve that problem. But I want to encourage you to avoid the mistake of withdrawing money from your 401k to cover emergencies like that. I remember a story from 2004 when I was just a young lad working in a restaurant. One of my coworkers had told me that he had gotten into some self-inflicted financial trouble. So he liquidated his 401k, which was worth about $15,000. I didn't realize how dumb of a decision that was until I got a little bit older. If you would have left that money alone and kept it invested in something like a total US stock fund, then that money would be worth about $100,000 today. This is the whole point of an emergency fund, so that you don't have to go in and start dipping into your retirement accounts like a 401k. Don't make the same stupid mistake like this guy build up that emergency fund sooner rather than later. A two fund, three fund, or target date fund is perfect for a 401k, which you can learn more about in this playlist to your left next. Hit that thumbs up button and share this video with someone that you think needs to see it. Get that free contribution calculator down in the description below. Done.